Welcome back, everybody. We are going to be covering the best apps released in September 2025 as released by the Self Host newsletter, which we go over every single Friday in our live stream. This episode will cover in no specific order 10 of the best apps we've seen spoken about in the Self Host newsletter, starting right now with number 10. Number 10 on our list is BoxR. BoxR is a pretty amazing plugin for your media management suite, which automatically pulls the top number of movies in the box office every single week. So for example, when I ran this, I ran it for week 36, which is September 1st to September 7th. And there are 10 movies which are released in the box office right now. So when I click to view that, we can see these are the top 10 movies in the box office right now. We can see very nice things like the posters, and we have the ability to go right to the IMDb or Wikipedia page of these movies. I can do this for any week that I want, I can go back to my movies and I can look at more weeks of the year if I want. I only pulled this for one week. It'll run every single week on Wednesday night at 2300 if I wanted to. By default, this will run every single Wednesday night at 11 p.m. and pull the latest 10 movies of that week. I can do this manually if I want as well by going to update last week, or I can update the historical week here by setting a different week manually if I want to. The strength of this container is the fact that it runs completely automatically once it's set up. Up next is number nine. Number nine is Ethernet Cable Connection Manager. This is kind of interesting because it runs completely out of an HTML page. You don't actually have to install this as a Docker container, which means it could run on just about anything. The way this works is we can set up devices here and we can set a number of ports per devices and then say what's mapped to what. For this example, I've set up two devices right now on my network. The first is a switch and the second is my TrueNAS server. And I can click these two ports to link them so I can track which ports on my switch go to which devices. So to add another device like a printer, I can say printer with one port. I'll select a color to be something different than I've used, say maybe this brown color, and then I'll click add device. And if you see my printer come up right here, and if I plug my printer into say port 24 on my switch, I can click port 24 on my switch and port one on my printer and click OK, and now they're connected. I can even label these ports by holding down Alt, clicking this, and then typing in the name of the device so I get this cool little label here on my port. By looking at this diagram, if I have a very complicated network set up with a lot of cabling, you can see how I can quickly manage that into something that's much simpler. I can go ahead and back up this profile. I can go ahead and restore this profile from before. I can find the connection by typing in the name. I think this is a really organized way to keep track of devices and networking. Up next is number eight. Number eight on the list is SproutTrack. For all you parents out there, SproutTrack is a baby activity log entry. There's a lot of software out there that does something like this, but none of it is self-hosted that I know of. And this is a great way to own the data so you're not sharing the data about your family or your newborn with some other company. This works the same way as a lot of other baby activity monitors. We get the option to input a activity our baby has done, and we can see a log here of all those things. Looking at the dashboard, which by the way is actually built to be mobile first, we can see that I have a daily stats ticker for everything that's happened to my baby, and there's a few things that need my attention. I can see right now my baby's sleeping for this time. I can see here it's been approximately two minutes since the last feed and over 10 hours since a diaper change. Since this is a baby, I'm gonna go ahead and change this diaper to show you guys how to reset this clock by just clicking diaper, adding a type from my diaper change and clicking save. Now we can see I had a diaper change that was added to my timeline and the counter has reset on top. I can do that for any one of these activity types here by adding a milestone, adding a measurement, adding pumping, adding bathing, or a variety of other activities. I could also go to my calendar and just jump in my calendar and add an event right from here if I have an appointment from a doctor or an OBGYN or something like that. Going back to the log entry, I'll be able to see all these and I can jump back days and days at a time to see all the past activity in the event that my spouse was doing something while I was sleeping, I could always go back and review all the logs that have happened if I want to know the last time something has happened and maybe I was not aware of it. Next up is number seven. Number seven on the list is RQ Cleaner. RQ Cleaner is an automated queue cleaner for sonar that removes stuck based on configurable rules. This is a little bit different from something like Clean Upper or because it's much, much simpler and doesn't have a UI. You basically just use this Docker Compose file that you'll find in the wiki and you set a few variables to tell sonar what you want to remove and what you want to do with that. For example, the first option you have is to remove quality blocked. This will remove any files that the quality is too low and was blocked by quality rules. And underneath those, you have the option to block 
every single thing that you remove. So if I choose to set, for example, remove quality block to true, I can then set the block remove quality to true, and it'll automatically block those really won't get added in the future. The schedule right now is set for every five minutes and that's completely configurable and the log level can be increased to be more verbose if you'd like it to. I like this container for its simplicity and even though it doesn't have a UI, the environment variables are very straightforward and it works and does exactly what it says it needs to do without getting super in depth with rules and hierarchies and lists and things like that. Up next is number six. Number six on the list is medics. Medix is a privacy first, locally hosted medical record system for individuals, families, and small healthcare practices. It features comprehensive patient management, lab result processing, medication tracking. We can see on the dashboard here that it's actually very clean and gives us a nice overview of what's going on. Under the patients tab, we have the opportunity to add a new patient, inputting all the information you see here on the screen. We can then add that patient to an institution if we want and assign a doctor. This is also a scheduling software where you can schedule an appointment selecting the patient, doctor, and institution you've just inputted at any date and time that you want with any type of appointment type that you see listed here, as well as being able to set a status of scheduled, completed, or canceled with optional notes. And you have the option to add medication. This form is fairly comprehensive, talking about what type of dosages you have the manufacturer, listing all active ingredients, overall strength, and description if you would like. We also have the opportunity to add lab reports here. You can upload a full PDF report. We have the opportunity here to manage the panels as well in the event that you wanna add a new panel and create that here. Overall, I think it's a pretty necessary container if you're the type of person that needs to see a lot of doctors and manage a lot of medical reports, maybe on behalf of yourself or maybe on behalf of someone else where you can't get into their app. This gives you a nice unified dashboard to put in all that information so that you can see everything in one place. Up next is number five. Number five on the list is Sommelier. Sommelier is a random content recommender from your radar and sonar libraries. We see here at the bottom, we can choose from both libraries, just my movies or just my series. If I use both and I click the another one button, it'll just keep generating random content. This is really great in the event you don't know what to watch or you have so much stuff that you are overwhelmed with choice. Currently, we see the poster part of this is not working, but I've already submitted a ticket on GitHub to the maintainer. So hopefully this will be fixed soon and you will be able to see the poster here for whatever media is selected. Up next is number four. Number four on the list is Crosswatch. Crosswatch is a container for people that run both Plex and Jellyfin side by side and want to keep them in sync. Watch lists, history, ratings, and playlists can become out of sync because they can be adjusted separately in each different media player. If you would like to keep them the same, this container will sync those automatically for you. I think this is a great container in the event that you have a lot of different settings that you don't wanna to have to recreate one container at a time or constantly move from one container to another. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Next up is number three. Number three on our list is MatchExec. MatchExec is a personal video game tournament manager. For someone who puts together custom and private online gaming matches, this is a pretty cool platform. You have the ability here to create a new match, and I've created one in UI just as a demonstration. In this case, I chose Counter-Strike 2. I picked a map. I don't have any players right now, but the way this works is it integrates directly with Discord, and that's how you would manage these matches. I can look at the history here to look at active matches or past matches. I can go ahead and look at the games that I have available, the Discord channels that are connected, and I can adjust the settings here within the Match Exec UI. For someone that has to organize all this stuff, I definitely think it cuts down on time quite a bit. Next up is number two. Number two on the list is Noten. Noten is a documentation management front end, and you can go ahead and do things like set categories here, view posts, create users, and tweak a few settings in the UI. I've created a couple test posts here just to demonstrate what this UI can do. I've created two posts in two categories and given them each a separate tag. So these are the two posts that I've created. And my test post, I did some markdown just to see how it rendered in the UI. And it's pretty straightforward. This is a very simple container that's used just to manage a little bit of documentation for yourself. Unfortunately, there's no way to have somebody be a user that doesn't have editability. So anyone that has an account will be able to edit posts. However, you don't need an account to view posts. So if you want to make this public, that's also possible just to have people have view only permission. There's many different documentation managers out there. I just kind of like this UI and I thought it was a nice, simple iteration. Next up is number one. Number one on the list is SyncWave. Looking at the dashboard, the first install of SyncWave comes with a test board populated with sample data. We have four example columns here, backlog, next week, in progress, and done, each of which have a number of cards underneath them. When I click on a card, it opens up this panel on the right that shows me which column it's in, the assignees here, the contents of the card, 
and some histories of the card. I can click this three dot menu on the top left for the card number and copy the card number, copy the card link, or delete the card. There's a search functionality here. If I want to look for a specific card, it searches and filters in real time. All in all, it's a very simple container and there's many Canvans out there, but I always like to give you guys the opportunity to see some competition. Maybe something about this one jumps out at you that didn't jump out at you from some other Canvan. But if you are using Canvan, leave a comment below and let me know which Canvan you like the most. Thank you all for watching another summary of the best of self host newsletter. Please like and subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like these videos. Leave some comments below if you feel like there's some containers that should have been on this that weren't. If you want to have a deeper conversation with us about these containers, go ahead and jump on our service at home discord. And if you want to thank me personally, please use the link below to buy me a coffee.